Singapore firms are set to tap into India's growth by lending their expertise in areas like infrastructure, planning or digital solutions. Singapore's Foreign Affairs Minister Vivian Balakrishnan has told at day one of the India-Singapore summit that the country is also a gateway for Indian companies looking to expand into the region. Cheryl Lin has more. India is aiming to become a 5 trillion US dollar economy in five years time. It will spend nearly 14 billion US dollars in urban infrastructure as its cities rapidly urbanize. This is a huge opportunity for Singapore and its firms, says Singapore's foreign affairs minister. We believe Singapore, a tiny city state, which is welcoming and familiar to Indian businesses, tourists and visitors. We believe we are a natural partner as India urbanizes and our expertise in urban development planning and infrastructure finance will be salient to India. India recently named water conservation as a priority and Singapore's water expertise may come in handy. In fact, Dr. Balakrishnan says no country understands the sanctity of water as much as Singapore. On top of that, the country remains the ideal gateway for Indian companies to help expand their supply chains and access growing ASEAN markets. Singapore also has the skills and infrastructure to test digital solutions. Other topics covered included the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, or RCEP, between 16 countries. Now, India's External Affairs Minister said one of the country's big concerns is its enormous trade deficit with China. And that's due to what he called unfair restricted market access. The merits of the RCEP outcome have to be economic. You know, you can't sell a trade agreement for its foreign policy benefit. I agree. I agree. You know, it has to be sold for its trade benefit. I think if that was more self-evident to Indians, I think you'd get clearly a much stronger resonance uh, out of India. In response, Dr. Balakrishnan emphasized that if fair rules can be sorted out, there is enormous opportunity in what would be the center of gravity in the Indo-Pacific. This will be a game changer. The 10 countries of Southeast Asia, India, China, Japan, Korea, Australia, New Zealand, this would be the mother of all trade agreements. And precisely at a time when the world is facing a pushback against globalization, against free trade, against economic integration, we believe it is all the more important for those of us who believe that this is a recipe for peace and prosperity to make the effort. Countries have pledged to conclude the deal by the end of the year.